Haiti and the Dominican Republic are located on a Caribbean island called Hispaniola. Long before the white men arrived, the native Taino lived on the island. They were very peaceful people. In the year 1492, Columbus crossed the Atlantic with three ships and discovered the New World. With swords and cross, he changed the destiny of the people forever. The Spaniards enslaved the Tainos and brought smallpox, cholera, avarice, and arrogance along with them. It was not until almost all the Tainos were dead when the Spanish priest Bartolomé de las Casas started a campaign for the rights of the indigenous people. Rather than using the Tainos, he suggested importing slaves from Africa instead. Spain bathed in the gold of the island. This attracted French pirates, who also settled on the island. The French government wanted to have their share of the pie, and the pirates were declared French colonials. From now on, there were two colonial powers, France and Spain. The transatlantic triangular trade arose between Europe, Africa, and the New World. Weapons and alcohol for Africa, slaves for the American plantations, cotton, coffee, sugar, and tobacco for Europe. For the Europeans, it was a golden age. They sweetened their lives with the new luxury commodities from slave labor. In Haiti, a single settler had an average of 10 slaves. One third of the slaves died a few years after their arrival. But this was not a big problem for the plantation owners. They simply picked up new ones as a replacement for the dead. And to make sure that the slaves were well behaved, they were beaten, mutilated, castrated, crucified, boiled alive in sugar syrup, and raped. This is when a new religion emerged which united the slaves from different regions of Africa, the voodoo cult. Through the French Revolution, the wind of liberty, equality and fraternity blew in France, and it blew over to the Caribbean. A few years later, the time had come. During a secret ceremony, the voodoo priest Duty Bookman called for a slave rebellion. He himself was killed, but the revolution was unstoppable. Three former slaves, L'Ouverture, Dessalines and Christophe, led the uprising. The revolution was not only about ending slavery, but also about independence from France. The first black republic of the world was born. Dessalines ordered for all whites to be tortured and killed. France did not readily recognize Haiti's independence and demanded high compensation for the loss of its plantations. To avert a renewed French attack, Haiti accepted the claims 40 years after the revolution. Now they had to pay off with money what they had already paid for with their blood. The payment of the compensation lasted until after the end of the Second World War, and it damaged Haiti's economy up until to this day. But the freedom did not mean peace. After the independence, the blacks and the mulatos fought for power. Until the 20th century, one coup followed another. During the First World War, Haiti went through a second round of imperialism. Now it was America's turn. Under the pretense of wanting to stop the ongoing violence, they wrote a new constitution and improved the infrastructure. However, they only managed to achieve this through forced labor, torture and murder. After the US withdrawal from Haiti, an Haitian despot followed. In 1957, the physician Papa Doc became president. Papadoc murdered his political opponents using his personal militia, the Tonton Makout. Over 30 years, they imposed terror on the Haitian people. 30,000 people were killed under his leadership. Haiti was looted and the country's academics fled abroad. After his death, his 19-year-old son, Baby Doc, took over the power. When Baby Doc was overthrown in 1986, he took hundreds of millions of dollars with him into exile. Now one Haitian president replaced the next. Coups were back on the agenda again. In 1990, the first truly democratic election in the country took place. The priest of the poor, Jean-Bertrand Aristide, was elected president. However, a few months later, the military instigated a coup and the struggle for power continued. 
The UN and the US impose a two-year trade embargo, which damaged the already fragile economy of Haiti even further. Social and political unrest followed. In order to stabilize the country, the Haitian government called for peacekeeping troops in 2004. As a result, Haiti indeed became more quiet. However, development and state building did not take place. Bonjour, bonjour. 